Tonight, I am not talking about media deals. I'm tired of it. I need a break from that. I am talking football. What's up, everybody? It's Trey Smith with College Game Time, back with another College Game Time YouTube video. And tonight, I am not talking about media deals. I'm tired of it. I need a break from that. I am talking football. It's talking season. Let's talk some Big 12 football and some quarterbacks. But before I get into it, you know what to do. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, watch to the end, leave a comment, share it with a friend. And if you're feeling generous, go ahead and leave me a super thanks. If not, no worries. But those of you that want to support what we're building here at College Game Time, please feel free to do so, and your generosity is very much appreciated. All right, the 2023 Big 12 quarterback preview is here. And I want to give you a quick rundown of how I'm going to do this, and I want you to get involved and engaged in this conversation because I want to know your thoughts as well. We've been having some great discussions on this channel, particularly over the last week and a half. Some of you have brought in some excellent insights, some very fair and very good takes. So I want us here from you as well. And here's how I'm doing this. Okay. I'm going to give you my biggest question mark as far as what quarterback in the big 12 is the biggest question mark headed into the 2023 season, which quarterback will be the biggest surprise, which, which big 12 team could have a quarterback controversy that surfaces at some point in the season. I'm going to give you my honorable mention, and then finally, I will give you my top five Big 12 quarterbacks headed into the 2023 season. So please follow the same format down below in the comments. Tell me, who's your question mark? Who's your biggest surprise? What, if any, controversies could, what, quarter, what, what, what program has a potential quarterback controversy brewing? Who's your honorable mention, and then who is your top five? And if you don't want to do all of that, just give me your top five. That's fine. So, and then let me know what you think, how, how, how I want to see how it shapes up to, to what I'm about to go through. So I'm going to start with the potential controversy that I think will be brewing at some point this season, and that is in Norman, Oklahoma, folks. Yes, coming right out of the gate with a hot take. And this is not a knock on Dylan Gabriel. However, I am just that high on Jackson Arnold. And I'm not saying it's going to be week one in fall camp. But I do see at some point during the 2023 football season, Jackson Arnold potentially taking Dylan Gabriel's job. Similar to what we saw a couple years ago with Caleb Williams and Spencer Rattler. Um, I, I just, Jackson Arnold's the real deal. All right, I've, I've, I live near where he played high school ball. I'm very familiar with him. I'm very familiar with his game. Uh, he's the real deal. The Sooners got a real one with him. Uh, like I said, I'm not trying to knock Dylan Gabriel. I just think that Jackson Arnold has all the tools and the skill set to take his job as a true freshman. He just needs to learn the system more. But he's been there all spring. So, and obviously continuing into the summer. So that's my uh, predicted quarterback controversy, Norman, Oklahoma. My biggest question mark, biggest question mark is the Texas Tech Red Raiders, Tyler Shuck. Shucks. No, but seriously, Tyler Shuck. Okay, question mark. Will he stay healthy? Will he be consistent? Because here's the thing. If Tyler Shuck can stay healthy and consistent in 2023, I don't think it's crazy to say we'll see Texas Tech playing in Arlington come December. Yes. And, 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 and I think that is for real. If you look at what Coach Joey McGuire has been building out in Lubbock over the past two years, year and a half, however long he's been there, the culture, the talent, the coaching staff, everything, this team is for real. They just need that captain to drive the ship on the field. And Tyler Shuck can be that dude. He really can. The question mark is, will he stay healthy and will he play consistent? And if those two things come together with what is brewing out there in Lubbock, like I said, I don't think it's crazy to think that they could be playing in Arlington come December. So that's my question mark. My biggest surprise, and this might surprise some of you watching, I'm going with Emory Jones at Cincinnati. Some of y'all say, who? <laughs> who? Emory who? Emory Jones, the former Florida then Arizona State, now Cincinnati quarterback. Uh, he sat the bench for three years at Florida. 
got his time to shine, and then lost his job to Anthony Richardson, who would ultimately go on to become a top five NFL draft pick. Then he transfers out to Arizona State. Arizona State, in my opinion, misused him. They were trying to use him as more of a passer and a thrower, and that's just not his game. He's a dual threat guy that leans heavily on the run game. And so he had a horrible season last year at Arizona State. So now he's at Cincinnati. I don't think a lot of people are, are expecting much out of Cincy, right? It's their first season in the Power Five. It's their first season post Luke Fickle. Yes, they were a playoff team a couple seasons ago, but this is not that team. Not saying they're in full rebuild mode, but I do think that there's not a lot of expectation on the Bearcats heading into 2023. Now, this pickup for Scott Satterfield, I feel like was one of the most under the radar transfer portal gets of the off season. And that's Emory Jones to Cincy. Because if you look at how Scott Satterfield uses his quarterbacks going all the way back to his time at Appalachian state, it's a very option run heavy type offense, very creative. Look at uh, Malik Cunningham at Louisville. I mean, two seasons ago, uh, uh, Malik Cunningham ran for a thousand yards and 20 touchdowns. I'm not saying Emory Jones is going to put up those types of numbers, but what I'm saying is, is that type of system that can produce those types of numbers, that's a system he can thrive in. And that's what he's been needing, a system he can thrive in. And I believe that he's found it. And I believe that he will surprise some folks by season end. So biggest surprise for 2023 uh, Big 12 quarterback is Emory Jones. And now before I hit the top five drum roll, I'm going to give you my honorable mention. And my honorable mention, who I, I wanted to put him in the top five, but I just couldn't do it. So when you don't get in the top five, you get an honorable mention. And that is Baylor Bear Blake Shapin. Here's the thing about Blake Shapin. We've seen what he can do. He came in uh, when Gary Bohannon went down, played in the Big 12 championship, was lights out. Played in the Sugar Bowl, lights out. Won both of those games. Took the job into the next season, 2022, and he just, he had a little bit of a slump season. Baylor all around had a little bit of a slump season, and I'm expecting them to bounce back this year, but the way Shaping can push the ball down the field, the, the, the accuracy he throws with, I mean, he's got the arm talent, he has all the tools, it's just, can he get that spark back that he had at the end of 2021? And I think if he can get that spark back, that's going to get the Baylor Bears their spark back, and then maybe they could get back to competing for one of those top two spots in the Big 12. So we'll see. Uh, David Aranda, obviously, he, he had some turnover, I know, on the defensive side of the ball. Their, their defensive coordinator, uh, where did he end up? Did he go to Auburn? I don't know. Sorry, I, I, I don't have that in my notes, and that's not, that just kind of came to me, but he's had some turnover over the offseason. So let's see what happens with Blake Shapin. I want to put him in the top five, but I'm giving him an honorable mention now, and we'll see how he does this year to determine if he gets into that top five next season. All right, moving on to my number five quarterback in the Big 12 is Keaton Slovis of BYU. Yes, I believe right now is the time to buy stock in Keaton Slovis. Obviously, his stock dropped pretty significantly this past season at Pitt. Pitt had a very weird season, right? They're coming off one of the better seasons in the school's you know, recent history, and uh, they put a quarterback out into the NFL draft. They lose their offensive coordinator to Nebraska. They lose their best receiver and arguably the best receiver in the country to USC. Narduzzi still hasn't gotten over that. And then Slovis, he, it's like he, he started the season off. He's, he's playing fine. They, they got that early win, that, that opening night win against uh, uh, West Virginia in, in, in the, in the uh, uh, backyard brawl. And then they, they're playing Tennessee and that's a neck and neck game. Game ended up, I think, going into overtime. But he went down, I think, in the first half. And it just seems like since that, as far as the 2022 season went, he never really like bounced back. Uh, he missed that game. Had he continued to stay in the Tennessee game and not get hurt, 
Could his season have looked a lot different? Possibly. Uh, I think he made the right move, hopping back in the portal. He's back on the West Coast. He's in a system that I think is very good for his skill set at BYU. And and let's not forget, this is a kid that threw for 3,500 yards and 30 touchdowns as a true freshman at USC. Like, he has the talent, particularly the arm talent. And that's exactly what BYU needs on that team. And so he could help smooth the transition in this little gap year uh, for BYU moving from G5 to Power 5. But he's he's my fifth-ranked guy. I think that uh, uh, what his ceiling could be at BYU is incredibly high. In fact, I think that he is an NFL-caliber talent. And so we'll just have to see how it plays out on the field. And can he stay healthy? All right, number four. Uh, Again, I really went back and forth on five and four of who should be where. I'm giving, I gave this guy the nod because, oh, and what I didn't say about Slovis, he's a fifth year guy. This guy I'm about to mention is a fifth year guy. But the difference is this guy is entering his second season in the current system he's in, and that's John Rice Plumley at UCF. He is a Taylor made Gus Malzahn quarterback. I mean, if you look at that Gus offensive system, when they have a dual threat quarterback, it is salty. I mean, go all the way back to his first year as a collegiate coach when he was the offensive coordinator at Arkansas in 2006. What did he do? He put Darren McFadden at quarterback. Ran the Wildcat, Wild Hog, took him all the way to the SEC championship. If not for a muffed punt, Arkansas is possibly playing for a national championship that season. Seriously, go look it up. Then, you know, he had the Tulsa seasons where they had some amazing seasons, but they were airing it out pretty heavily. Gets to Auburn, has Cam Newton when he's the the offensive coordinator for Cam Newton. Obviously, Cam Newton, number one overall pick, generational talent. Still, together, those two won a national title. He comes back as the head coach, and in his first season with Nick Marshall, the converted defensive back, he takes them all the way to the BCS National Championship game, loses to Florida State, and then his time at Auburn just sort of tapered off from there because he never really had that dual-threat guy. Now at UCF, he's got Jonathan Rice Plumley. John Rice Plumley. Uh, who last year ran for or threw for 2,500 yards, almost ran for 1,000 yards in his first year in the system. And, and keep in mind, too, Plumlee's a guy that ran for 1,000 yards his freshman year at Ole Miss. So he, he is no stranger to running the ball from the quarterback position. And I just think that his, it's year two with Gus, even though UCF did hire a new offensive coordinator, it's Gus's system. Um, And I think UCF is my pick out of all the Big 12 newcomers to have the best season out of the four newcomers. I just think athletically and speed wise, they they have they've had power five speed even as a G5. Um, And I think that Plumlee is a guy, a fifth year guy, second year in the system. I don't think it's crazy to see him putting up 3000 pass yards and 1000 rushing yards. Uh, if he can stay healthy and, and, and continue to excel in this Gus Malzahn system. So five, I've got Keaton Slovis, four, John Rice Plumley, And number three, ladies and gentlemen, is Kansas State's finest, Will Howard. Will Howard stepped in last season for Adrian Martinez when Martinez went down with an injury and put on a master class throwing for 15 throwing for 1600 over 1600 yards 15 touchdowns to four interceptions keep in mind two of those interceptions were against Alabama in the bowl game so against big 12 he had a 15 to 2 touchdown to interception ratio Kansas State runs one of the most unique creative offensive schemes in the country. Former quarterback Colin Klein called plays for the first time last year and looked like he's been doing it his entire career. So I love Will Howard at Kansas State. I love Will Howard to pick up where he left off last year as it pertains to Big 12 play. Yes, the Wildcats are going to miss Deuce Vaughn who I am very excited is a Dallas Cowboy, by the way. But they had the transfer running back come in from Florida State. Um, I just think that Will Howard, what we saw last year in that seven-game window, we're going to get to see all season this year. And if that's the case, once again, here's another team that it's not crazy when December rolls around if we're not talking about repeat for the old Kansas State Wildcats. All right, number two. This might make some of you mad. 
Don't know why, but I just have a feeling it might make some people mad. But my number two quarterback in the Big 12 is Quinn Ewers, Texas Longhorns. If you've been following my content for some time now, you know I'm not a Texas fan. I do not like Texas. All right? I usually root against Texas regardless of who they're playing. But I also got to give credit where credit is due. And Quinn Ewers, this dude can spin that rock. Talent alone on paper, he's the best in the conference. Quite frankly, Texas on paper is the best in the conference. But what's the problem with the Texas Longhorns? Year in and year out, the team that we see on paper is not the team we see on the field. So it's hard for me to make you as the top quarterback because I don't know if we're going to get the guy on paper or different, like I don't know if the same guy we see on paper is the same guy we'll see on the field. Now, last year, I'll give him his credit. Had he not gotten injured against Alabama, Texas wins that game. Texas wins that game. He's also surrounded by the best weapons, the best arsenal of weapons in the conference, led by one of the top weapons in the country in Xavier Worthy. So we'll see. Can Texas finally, for the first time since 2005, maybe not that long, Put together a team on the field that resembles the team we see on paper. I don't know. Coach Sark, has he figured it out? Has he got something in store? Because quite frankly, on paper, Texas should be representing the Big 12 in the college football playoff this year. The last thing I want to say on Quinn Ewers is I also do wonder how will he respond to being in the shadow of arguably the most hyped recruit since LeBron James. And LeBron James didn't even go to college. He went straight to the league. But I'm just saying that kind of hype that surrounded Arch Manning. Now, Quentin Ewers is no stranger to hype. He was also the number one overall rated player in his class, had a perfect rating on 24-7 sports, 247 sports. But his kind of dimmed a little bit when he chose to forego his senior year of high school football to enroll early at Ohio State so that he could start getting NIL money. Then he transferred to Texas, blah, 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 blah. But I just wonder, if Texas gets into a dogfight and Quinn Ewers isn't just on it and the fans start chanting, Archie, 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 even though his name's Arch, you know, how is he going to handle that? I don't know. But he's my number two quarterback. And then finally, if you're still watching, I appreciate you very much. Uh, finally, number one for me going into 2023 quarterback in the Big 12 is Kansas Jayhawk. Jalen Daniels. Yes, you heard that correctly. Kansas Jayhawk, Jalen Daniels. Listen to me. Jalen Daniels was one of the most dynamic players in the country for the first five games a season ago. Had he not gotten injured against TCU, who knows what could have happened in that game and how that could have impacted the rest of the season. Who knows what would have happened the next three out of four games that the Kansas Jayhawks lost without Jalen Daniels. Then when Jalen Daniels came back, was he fully healthy? His injury was supposed to keep him out the whole season, but he came back early. And he, 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 I'm not going to say he didn't look the same because if you watched him in the bowl game, he put on a pretty incredible performance. And one of the things that sticks out to me about him is he brings like the amount of times he had to come from behind. Uh, early in the season during that win streak, there were a couple games there where they were down by two and three scores, and he brought Kansas back. Then if you go to the bowl game against Arkansas that they ended up losing, but they were down 25 points at the end of the third quarter or late in the third quarter, and he brought them back, took the game into overtime, and almost won. So I, I think he's one of the most dynamic electric players in the conference. Definitely the most dynamic electric quarterback in the conference. Uh, He can hurt you with his legs and his arms. Um, And here's why I'm putting him at number one, okay? Because out of all these quarterbacks that I've talked about tonight, Jalen Daniels, and I don't mean this as a knock against any other kid or anyone on his team, but Jalen Daniels has the, the, the least amount to work with relative to these other guys. Think about that. I mean, if you put his arsenal compared to Arch Manning's arsenal, it's night and day. So the fact that he's able to get so much out of less with his offense 
To me, that's impressive. And I'm not saying that Kansas is going to start 5-0 and again and they're going to compete for a Big 12 championship and da-da-da-da-da-da-da. I'm just saying, based off the performance this young man put on a season ago and what he looks primed to do this season, I'm giving him the number one spot in the Big 12 2023 quarterback rankings. And uh, I'd love for you to join the conversation. So let me know in the comments who you got. Remember, who are your top five? Who's your honorable mention? Who's your potential quarterback controversy? If you see any brewing uh, in the Big 12, who do, you think your big, who do you think the biggest surprise will be out of the quarterbacks in the Big 12? And then who's your biggest question mark and why? Love you guys. Can't wait to see what the conversation holds here down in the comments. See y'all next time. That's it for me. Trey Smith, College Game Time. Peace.